Take a look at this guy. He's Chinese and he's lived in Canada for 30 years. Okay, but he doesn't have any English friends. Wow. Okay, take a look at this woman. She's from India and she's lived in Canada for more than 30 years, but she doesn't have any English friends. Wow. This is such a common problem in Canada, which might surprise you because Canada is known for its diversity. Okay, Canada welcomes people from all around the world. It doesn't matter what religion they're from. It doesn't matter what skin color they have. Okay, look at this guy. This guy is a Muslim. This woman is a Jew. This guy is Chinese. That woman is a lesbian. That guy is Brazilian. Okay, people from all around the world come to Canada. It's such a diverse place. But the problem is that all these people don't mix. They don't mix. Okay? So they all live their own life and they don't interact with each other. Okay? Look at this. Here's a map of my city. Okay? Calgary is the city where I live. Okay? Here's a map of the city. Okay? In the Northwest, that's where Chinese people live and middle class white people. Okay? In the Northeast, this is where South Asians, like Indians, Pakistanis, Bangladeshis, okay, a lot of Africans, and poor white people live in the Northeast. Okay, in the Southwest, there's a lot of rich white people, a lot of really expensive houses, nice cars. Okay, in the Southeast, there's a lot of factories. Okay, I live in the Northeast because I'm poor. And I like immigrants. I like people from India, China, Africa. Okay, now why does this happen? Why are all the Chinese over there and all the Indians over here? Why? Why don't they mix? Well, it's because people stay within their comfort zone. Okay, a comfort zone is the area that you're comfortable in. Okay, people just like to stay comfortable, right? Look at this guy. He's a Muslim from Pakistan. Okay, all his friends are Muslims from Pakistan. And he shops at a Pakistani supermarket here in Calgary. Okay, he's lived in Calgary for like 30 years and he doesn't have any English friends. Why? Because he's, he stays in his comfort zone. He doesn't leave his comfort zone, okay? So the secret, if you want to make English speaking friends, is you have to leave your comfort zone. Okay, but that means you have to take risks and you have to be uncomfortable. As soon as you leave your comfort zone, it's a bit scary, right? You get uncomfortable, okay? You're gonna have new situations that you might not know how to deal with, okay? But that's fun. Try not to be scared. Try to think of it as a challenge, something that's fun, okay? Now, you might say, yes, I will take the risks, but what do I do? What do, what do I do? Okay, I'm willing to take the risks, but I don't know what to do. Well, I'm going to tell you what to do, okay? You need to go from your comfort zone to a zone with friendly people. Okay, you need friendly people. Okay, you don't want to go to a place where people are mean or racist or anything like that, okay? They need to be friendly. So I'm going to give you two things that if you do, you will make lots of English speaking friends guaranteed. Guaranteed means for sure. Absolutely. 100%. Okay. The first thing is volunteering. Okay. Volunteering. This means 
helping people for free. Helping people for free. Now, people who volunteer are very nice people. They're kind people. They're helping people for free. So if you are volunteering with them, they're going to help you for free. Wow. So if you make some nice friends who are also volunteers, they're going to help you if you need anything. You know, maybe you need help with some paperwork, like visas or a driver's license or something. They're going to help you. Or if you need help with something with the culture or the language, okay, they're going to help you. It's very hard living in a new country, right? Where you don't speak the language, you don't know the culture. It's very intimidating, right? But if you have friends who are Canadians, they're going to help you. Okay, so this is a great way to do that. Now, you might ask, how do I volunteer? What do I do? Well, the first thing you can do is just Google volunteering opportunities in Calgary. And you're going to find results like this. The Salvation Army. Okay, that's an organization that helps poor people and homeless people, okay? Or you might find the Calgary Zoo. Okay, if you like animals, this would be a great place to volunteer. You can take care of some animals and you can meet some great people who love animals as well. Okay, if you like reading or if you like working in a very quiet, peaceful place, then maybe you should volunteer at a library. Okay, that's also an option. Or you could volunteer at the Catholic Family Services. Okay, this is an organization that helps poor people and people who are struggling with different things in life. Okay, you don't need to be a Catholic to volunteer here. Anyone can volunteer. Okay, uh, you could volunteer at festivals. Festivals like the Calgary Stampede. Do you know what that is? The Calgary Stampede is a huge festival that happens every summer here in Calgary. Okay, you might enjoy volunteering there. You can really get used to Canadian culture. Okay, that would be really great. Uh, or you could volunteer at the Calgary Food Bank. This is a great organization that gives food to uh, poor people who can't afford to buy food. Okay, so there's so many different options to volunteer here in Canada. And if you do any of these, you're going to make a lot of English friends. Okay, and if you start volunteering at a place and you don't really like it, or there's not that many good people working there, I mean, then you can just leave and you can go to some somewhere else, okay? And you can volunteer at another place and make some English friends there. I'm sure if you volunteer at one or two places, three places, you're going to make so many English speaking friends, okay? Just volunteer somewhere for a few months, one or two months, and that will be amazing. Now, the second thing I wanna tell you as a good strategy to make friends it's even easier than volunteering, and I think it's even better, is go to a church. Go to a church. Now you're probably thinking, what? I can't go to a church. I'm not a Christian. It doesn't matter. You don't need to be a Christian to go to a church, okay? And you told me you will take risks, okay? You will be uncomfortable. If you go to a church, yeah, you're going to be uncomfortable for a little bit, okay? But then when you realize that people like you and you're making friends, then you're going to relax and everything's going to be okay. Okay, so don't worry. If you go to a church, just relax. Don't worry. You don't have to become a Christian. You don't have to be a Christian. You never have to become a Christian if you want to go to a church, okay? You could be a Muslim, you could be a Hindu, you could be a Buddhist, you're welcome at the church, okay? You don't have to do anything special. You don't have to wear special clothes. 
You don't have to say anything. Just be yourself. Just be yourself. Okay, now look, at a church, you are welcome. You will find love and acceptance. You will find help. You will find very kind people who speak English. Okay, a lot of people come to Canada and they want to meet friends who have white skin and who speak English as their mother tongue. Okay, if you want to do that, the best place to find these friends is at a church. Okay, churches are full of white people and they are very friendly and they will be your friend. They'll be happy to be your friend and they speak English fluently. They're a native English speaker. Now, you'll find great people at a church, but if you don't, if you go to a church and the peop- nobody talks to you and the people seem a little bit cold, forget about it, okay? Don't go to that church anymore. Go to a different church. Okay, I want you to go to four churches in a month, okay? Just one month when you come to Canada, go to church for a whole month, okay? Now, Christians go to church on Sunday mornings, okay? So one Sunday, you're going to go to one church. The next Sunday, you're going to go to a different church, and then a different church, and a different church. So in one month, you're going to go to four churches, okay? And then you're going to think, and you're going to decide which one had the nicest people, okay? And then you're going to go to that church for a few months, and I guarantee you, you are going to make so many friends, English-speaking friends. Okay, now here's a tip. Look for small churches, okay? This church here probably has about 50 people who attend this church. Okay, so that would be a great choice. Now, some churches have thousands and thousands of people. Okay, don't go to those churches because nobody will notice you. Okay, if you go to this church, everyone will see you. Maybe you have brown skin. Maybe you'll be the only person with brown skin in the church. Okay, they'll notice you and they'll come talk to you. They'll say, hi, how are you? Are you new here? You know, and and then you can build a friendship. It's going to be amazing, I promise you. Okay, now, uh, like I said, Christians go to church on Sunday morning. Now, how do you find the time that you should go to the church? Well, see that sign there in front of the church? That sign probably says this, Sunday morning service. The service is when people meet together for one or two hours in the church, that's called a service, starts at 10 a.m., 10 a.m., okay? So then you should go to the church a little bit early, like maybe uh, 20 minutes early or even half an hour early. Okay, now another way to find a church is to look on Google Maps. Okay, but I mean, there's so many churches in Canada. You can just walk down the street and say, oh, there's a church. There's a church. Okay, so you don't need to look online, but if you want to look on Google Maps, just search for church in Calgary or something like that, okay? And you're gonna find tons and tons of churches. Now, most churches have websites. Okay, so go to the website and see what kind of church is this? What what are the people like? Okay, just so you can think a little bit and be prepared. I think that's a good way to do it. Okay, now, if you want to uh, be more comfortable and less uh, shocked or surprised when you go to a church, then do some research. Okay, do research. What do Christians believe? Uh, What is a church service like? Just search for these things on Google. What is a church service like? Okay, you'll find things like, well, in most church services, Uh, You might do some singing, sing some songs for like 30 minutes, okay? And then there might be some preaching. That's where the pastor stands at the front of the church and speaks or preaches on something from the Bible, okay? And then the service is done. 
Okay, so this is how it's going to go. Okay, the service starts at 10 o'clock. You're going to go there at 9.30 a.m. You walk in the door. You walk to the church. You open the door. You walk in. Okay, someone is going to talk to you. Someone is going to say, hi, how are you? Welcome here. Okay, instantly, you'll probably have one friend right there. Okay, you talk to someone who's a native English speaker. Okay, then you can talk for about half an hour. And then at 10 o'clock, the service will start. Okay, then you sit down somewhere and then just watch people. Watch people and copy them. Okay, if they stand up, stand up. If they sit down, sit down. Just look around. Okay, learn. Just, just enjoy the moment. Don't be afraid. It's a. It's going to be a very, uh, a very interesting experience for you. Okay, so don't be afraid of it. It's just a learning process. That's gonna. That's what's going to happen. It's a very friendly place. Okay, then after the service, uh, usually people mix and mingle. Mix and mingle means they talk to each other, um, they laugh, they have fun, they ask each other, how was your week? Oh, my week was great. Would you like to come over for lunch? Sure. Okay, so after church, probably someone might invite you to their house for lunch. Okay, I've met some people in Canada from China, India. Okay, I always ask them, do you have any English friends? And they say, no. I say, have you ever been at the home of an English speaking person? And they say, no. They've never even been to an English speaking person's house. If you go to a church, you're going to get invited to someone's house and they'll give you a meal and they'll be your friend. Okay, now they might have a picnic. Very often after a church service, there might be a picnic or something. Okay, then you can go to a picnic and you could maybe meet like 10, 20 people in one day. You have like 15, 20 friends that you've made in one day. That's more than other people make in their entire lifetime in just one day. Okay, and it's very common that churches will go and do something fun like camping in the summers. Okay, they might go camping for a weekend. So they would probably invite you to go camping with them. So then you can spend a weekend in the mountains, uh, going on hikes, uh, fishing, swimming, playing games, sleeping in a tent. Okay, that would be such a good experience for you. You'd be speaking English all weekend, making friends. It would be a crazy cultural experience for you. Uh, you would learn so much about Canada, life, people, language. Okay, look, if you do this, I'm telling you, you will make friends. This is the best way to make English speaking friends. Okay, look at these people, the guy from China and the woman from India. They've been in Canada for 30 years and they don't know any English speakers. If they had gone out of their comfort zone and if they had taken my advice and watched this lesson, if they had gone to a church or done some volunteering, okay, their lives would be completely different. It would be completely different. They wouldn't be in their own community, in their own uh, safety comfort zone, right? With just Chinese people or just Indian people. Okay, they would have English friends and their lives would be much easier. Okay, they want English friends, but they don't know what to do. Well, I'm telling you exactly what to do. And hey, I would be happy to answer any of your questions. If you want to know what you should do in a church or, or how you should have a conversation with someone at a volunteering place, then just let me know down in the comments. Maybe you have a lot of questions. I'd be happy to answer your questions and to, to help you get friends. You know, this is really important. If you come to Canada, you need friends. So even if you're not coming to Calgary, if you're moving to Toronto or Vancouver or something and you want advice, 
Maybe you want me to look online and recommend a church to you. I'd be, I'd be happy to do that. Okay, I'll go on Google. I'll find you a good church and I'll say, okay, maybe check out this church or this church. Okay, so I'll give you some recommendations. I'll help you. But I want you to know that you need to take some risks. And there are some very friendly people in Canada. You just need to meet them. You need to meet them. Okay, so I want to know, when you come to Canada, what is your plan? What is your plan? You need to have a plan if you're going to succeed in the friendship area. Okay, otherwise, you're not, your life is not going to change. If you're from India, it's like you live in small India here in Canada. Or you live in Chinatown. You're in Canada, okay? Chinatown is full of Chinese shops, Chinese people. Okay, if you come to Canada, you should go out of your comfort zone and meet some wonderful Canadian people, native English speakers. It's going to help your life so much. Okay, so that's the best advice I have for you. Let me know if you have any questions down there and tell me what your plan is down in the comments. Okay, see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.